The following is an America Matters media production. The views expressed do not necessarily represent those of the station or its advertisers, although we think they should. But that's the opinion of America Matters media. Coffee, food, the power. My name is Brendan Kramer. I will be your uh, host today, along with our special guest, Leland Bagri. And our co-host, Jennifer Green, will not be here today. So uh, it's a nice, cold Friday uh, morning. Uh, we're here in uh, Reno Town Mall, which is uh, open for business as Nevada's local marketplace. And uh, there's a lot to talk about once again, Leland. Yeah. The, um, I guess uh, there's um, a lot, a lot to do with uh, foreign uh, entanglements uh, has come to the headlines. There is, of course, the First Amendment freedom of the press issues uh, that have uh, come forward this week, and um, also the Second Amendment. Uh, I was just telling Leland that uh, of the uh, tragedy in Thousand Oaks where the uh, gunman shot an unarmed security guard and then killed 12 uh, members. Uh, according to the producer of Bar Rescue, the show that uh, takes uh, dilapidated or underperforming bars and remakes them, he said that there are laws in California that forbid bars from hiring an armed guard. Now is that exclusively California or are there other states? I, I, I know that some states uh, I guess Texas is one of them. You can carry, uh, you can be armed inside the bars. So I, I would not suspect that those states would, no. would uh, forbid the hiring of an armed guard. It sounds like something California would do. And you know, this new governor of California, Gavin Newsom, he is uh, very much against the, the Second Amendment. So mm -hmm. there's going to be even more restrictions coming down there unless the Ninth Circuit manages to stop its inconsistency and start striking down some of these laws. Well, and that, you don't see that happening. Well, they have done some good things, but they've also failed in other areas. They, they, uh, they're caught in a conundrum now in which some of their rulings say that you have to have either concealed carry or open carry, but they've ruled against both in individual cases, so they, they're no facing a conundrum, yeah. yeah. I know there was a bar, uh, and it got a little bit of attention, who used to uh, hang on its wall uh, a welcome sign to gun owners uh -huh. and gun carriers. Okay. So concealed carry was welcome and, and even preferred, you know, and uh, I think that would like, I would like to see that as a trend. Sure, sure, uh, yeah. I feel much more comfortable in, in any gun-free zone if I knew there were some people carrying around. That's right. and. Uh, you know, the Second Amendment should not have these uh, exclusions. I, uh, there are too many exclusions already, and uh, the idea that uh, people are going to go around just shooting each other, uh, with, uh, and if the ones that do, the, the people that are, are troubled or uh, outright criminals, they need a check, and the best check is uh, an armed uh, personnel that can, uh, you know, in that six to ten minutes or whatever it takes for the police to respond, you need a, another presence there that is capable of deterring and or stopping that sort of uh, activity. Well, one of the reasons I prefer the Gun Owners of America to the National Rifle Association is because they have not hesitated to support the libertarian candidate. Yes. Particularly in districts where there is no Republican running. Right. I had a situation twice in 2004-2006 in the 32nd Congressional District of California where I was seeking a Congressional seat. Mm -hmm. And LaPierre turned up on Larry Elder's show in the morning as I'm heading downtown Los Angeles. And I, I got into the screener, but I never got a chance to speak to him. And my question was going to be, why do you not support libertarian candidates? We are always pro-gun. Yeah, always, exactly. without exception. And yet there is a, 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 a profession or a lobby group that will not, or a, apparently just chooses which one of these candidates. Has there ever been a Libertarian candidate that has been supported by LaPierre? I think one or two, but very rarely. I mean, they, they will normally support a moderate, even almost anti-gun Republican over a Libertarian. And in my case, there was no Republican money. Uh -huh. So it was just the socialist Solis and myself. Mm -hmm. So 
where was the hesitation? What was that? Yeah, exactly. What, what, what are you afraid of? Yeah, and, and I am, you know, I am thoroughly in support of guns, but I'm not the biggest shooter in the world. But I was actually supported by the Nevada Rifle and Pistol Association uh, when one of my races is a libertarian. So I'm grateful for that. But um, the, the uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, and uh, again, one of my pet peeves, even though Libertarians and Greens and other smaller parties are on the ballot, uh, only Zogby, only Zogby has ever really included them in polls. So most people don't have no idea what they stand for, or in, you know, yeah. uh, as far as the big polling. Well, I did get the gun owners of, of America endorsement in that race, so I felt good about that, uh, and should have. But there are 20,000 uh, gun laws on the books across this country. Mm -hmm. And those gun laws got on the books because the NRA has been supporting candidates to support the, yeah, those exactly. gun restrictions. Yeah. And so I'm not really quite sure why we're so excited about the NRA. It should be the gun laws of America that gets... Right. I mean, the, the cry to support existing gun laws, you know, it's... Uh, well, uh, and just saying, well, we don't support any more gun laws. And also, if uh, drugs are involved, the NRA is very reluctant to come in, uh, even when the, uh, there's an obvious injustice, such as that young man that was in his car and said, I have a gun, I have a permit for a gun. Up in Minneapolis, I think? Yes. And then afterwards it was found out he had some pot in his car, and the NRA did not come to his defense, it's certainly not as vigorously as they do in other cases. Yeah. And the, even the background check. Uh, uh -huh. can violate uh, a person's freedom. I know there was a woman up in, uh, I think it was upstate New York, who was visited upon her birthday by her ex-boyfriend who took her life. Uh -huh. She was she was waiting for a gun permit <laughs> about three or four weeks in and, you know, you know could have saved her. And also, you know, the, the gun permits can be arbitrary. Um, uh, and there's very little recourse. There's no, it, it's an administrative decision, but there's really no administrative follow-up to contest it. You're supposed to go to court, and it, then you don't know what court to go to. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I have seen cases where they take 20-year-old misdemeanors and deny uh, somebody a, a permit, and it's, it's uh, not right. What is this story about consumers can, I see it on Drudge here, can track uh, Thanksgiving turkeys life story. Did you see that? No. I didn't. And, and why are they packing them in the first place to get on the plane? Well, we're almost out of time for our first segment. We'll be back after the break. Hey everyone, Dave Escher here introducing you to our new store, the Nevada Marketplace. This is America Matters Media on AM 1180 KCKQ. A Lotus Broadcast Station. The Power of Radio since 1967. Are you shy and don't want to talk on the air? Text us your questions or comments to 775-237-2266. Hello and welcome back to Talking Food for Power. My name is Brendan Trainer. I'm an award-winning writer here in Northern Nevada. And my uh, special guest today is Leland Fagri. And uh, I'd like to give a shout out to our sponsors. Uh, our longtime sponsor is Reno Computer Services and they can be found on uh, the internet and by phone. The internet address is renocomputerservices.com and the phone number is 775-737-4400 and they are Reno's premier uh, internet of, uh, computer repair, malware removal and data recovery service. Uh, they are local uh, people and I have used them and they are excellent and very reasonably priced. So check them out at renocomputerservices.com. Also a shout out to our sponsor Max Justice, a character who crusades for liberty and freedom against the bad guys. And you can find Max Justice on YouTube or at maxjustice.tv. Well, we started with the Second Amendment, but now I'd like to talk a little bit about the First Amendment. Uh, that there's been several First Amendment issues in the news uh, recently and of course just breaking today in fact were two stories uh, one of them was that the judge ruled in favor of CNN's Jim Acosta and said that the, uh, the White House cannot simply pull his press pass without some kind of due process, uh, administrative due process and the second one is that uh, 
the Justice Department seemingly made a boo-boo and filed a court case against another journalist that uh, mirrored or seemed to indicate that similar charges were being filed, have been filed against Julian Assange, the founder of WikiLeaks. So, as you were saying, uh, that one concerns me greatly. Huh? Yes, exactly. Uh, it, for those who don't know, of course, uh, Julian Assange is uh, it has been hidden away in an Ecuadorian um, embassy in London for eight years. And uh, he's friends with Pamela Anderson, she, uh, the actress. She visits him occasionally and says he's not in good health. He has, he's not allowed outside. He's got no actual sunshine for eight years. And um, his mother calls it uh, a slow uh, suicide. Yes, slow, slow murder or suicide. And um, uh, this all started uh, because of a honey trap in Sweden where a woman who had ties to the deep state uh, supposedly seduced Julian and then claimed that uh, he, he uh, refused to use a condom, which was a crime in Sweden. And um, the um, Swedish authorities uh, since then have actually uh, conducted long, slow hearings, but they eventually cleared him and they yeah. dropped the charges. Mm -hmm. But England refuses to pull its warrant. So if he steps out of the embassy, he can be arrested by British authorities and then sent to America. Well, England is our 51st state, or is it? In yeah. <laughs> yeah, one of the two. <laughs> so they'll, they'll do whatever we want them to do, basically. Yes, exactly. And um, the, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about England in a little bit when we talk about what's going on with Brexit. But uh, the, the, uh, the situation here is I'm watching the news is that uh, I watch CNN today, of course, they were rejoicing, you know. <laughs> well, you had a chance to check out CNN before you got in here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they, they were rejoicing uh, over there. And, I thought uh, I heard pop. It must have been the champagne quote. Yes. <laughs> and uh, the, um, you know, and I, 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 I really don't know enough about how white, uh, White House press forces are handed out. Apparently, the judge doesn't think it's an absolute privilege. Well, it is, the, and or how they rescinded because yeah. the, the Obama administration had rescinded a press credential to uh, a woman for her views on abortion. I mm. That was a, several years ago now, but so it does happen. And there was no uh, First Amendment storm at the time. That I, remember. I remember that. Elderly, uh, that elderly woman that was in there for a long time uh, questioned American imperialism, and she was forced out. I don't know if they took her press credentials or just had her fired. Or, you know, mm -hmm. I, and I can't think of her name. But uh, uh, the um, the fact is that uh, you know, so CNN uh, Trump will have to reinstall Acosta. And, uh, well, it's, it, it's on a temporary basis. Yeah. I, I think the administration in any White House has the discretion to decide who is part of the press corps and not part of the press corps. Why, sure. And they, you know, Sorn Spicer, I, I remember, and I suppose um, uh, Ms. Huckabee, Sarah Sanders, um, has invited alternative media on occasion in, in there and, and let them have a chance to talk so as well. Alex Jones, thing. I think, maybe. Uh, yeah. Invited and was considered, I think, in the early days of the administration to be a permanent part of the press corps. Hmm. I, don't, I don't know how that played out, but uh, I haven't heard much about it since, of course. His, his fate has been uh, <laughs> consigned to a, a, and to a different level at this point. So I, I didn't see that Fox covered the WikiLeaks story, but MSNBC and CNN both covered the WikiLeaks story. But it was very striking because they covered it but their angle was, wow, goody, maybe now Mueller will get a chance to cross-examine Julian Assange if he's extradited to the U.S. You know there's nothing there. Yeah. <laughs> so he can cross-examine him all he wants and, and bait him, uh, set him up, whatever he, he has occasion to do, but it, it's not going to reveal anything because he's already said that his sources were not the Russian government. Yes, he's already said that. It was a non-state actor. The, um, uh, but we know that Mike Pompeo, uh, former head of the CIA, hates WikiLeaks because they revealed Vault 7, yep. which shows that the uh, deep state is capable of uh, producing false signatures on, um, on uh, like Lucifer 2, 
and so on, uh, to ascribe them to uh, Russia. And, Even though uh, they are actually their own. Yes. From the United States intelligence establishment. Yeah. Right. And, uh, you know, everybody still assumes that because 17 of our finest intelligence agencies signed off on it that uh, Russia definitely hacked the election, but they've never proven it. And the um, no, often often source. I mean, I can't I can't think of a person who hasn't sourced <laughs> that 17 intelligence agencies, and yet there's really no proof of that. Right. The the, the whole uh, those 17 agencies really boiled down to some handpicked uh, agents under Brennan and Clapper, and 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 uh, everybody else. All those other 17 just signed off on it, and that also begs the question of why we have 17 intelligence agencies. Yeah, yeah exactly. Clapper. How much bureaucracy do you really need? Yes. <laughs> and uh, what, uh, you know, the, 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 the Assange thing is, is amazing because of the fact that uh, it just shows once again that the establishment mainstream media is concerned only about its own. For example, they make a big deal about the murder of Khashoggi uh, because he was an establishment Washington Post columnist. But they don't uh, talk very much about all the other journalists that are being killed around the world, and, and much at all, especially uh, they, they don't care about the uh, alternative news. For example, I'm wearing a sweatshirt today from the organization called Hotline, which uh, scrutinizes the police and uh, brings forward uh, stories about uh, police uh, problems with enforcing the law fairly among the police. They were one of the groups that was kicked off Facebook uh, in the recent purge. Can you get that uh, shirt up to the microphone so that the listeners can see that? <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> well, I think we have a video. Here. Maybe they can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, Coplock and a couple of other uh, police um, uh, watchdog organizations were kicked out. And and the, um, the, the fact is that the the mainstream media is very clickish, but it, it also goes back to what we were saying, that once you have a government license to do something, you tend to look down on those that are unlicensed and those that are doing independent work. It's an arrogance. Yeah. Yes. It comes with that kind of uh, statute. Exactly. And so um, the, um, the First Amendment is under fire. The Second Amendment, uh, we know, is always under fire. Gee, what's next? Uh, the Third Amendment? <laughs> the Fourteenth. The, fourth, the Fourteenth? Yes, exactly. Um, the, uh, the the problem with the, the state is, and, and you know, Alexander Hamilton was absolutely wrong when he said we don't need a Bill of Rights because it's only the Bill of Rights that it, saved us. It wasn't just Hamilton, it was Madison. It did. It also prevailed because they were the Federalists. And yeah. And, uh, even though the Constitution doesn't authorize the government to go after uh, the press, uh, the, the ink was hardly dry on the document when, uh, you know, President Adams pushed the Alien and Sedition Act, and, and so even the written Constitution has been tested time and time again. But fortunately, here in America, we still have a pretty vigorous First Amendment, and uh, the left is attacking it uh, more so than the right, although the right also attacks it. But, we need to continue to uphold uh, that amendment, uphold freedom of expression, not just for establishment people, but for everybody. Uh, everybody on the internet is actually a journalist. If you're a blogger, you are a journalist, and you have uh, the same protections under the First Amendment that the New York Times and the Washington Post enjoy, if not more. And I had hesitated to support or defend Hamilton. But uh, Madison's point was that if you start delineating rights, you might be precluding some right. that were already implied in the Constitution. So that was the reason. That was the reason behind the effort not to define what those rights were. And here we now how many amendments do we have? Twenty-eight. <laughs> how long does this go on? Yeah, exactly. So you know they have a point. Yeah, they did have a point, but uh, fortunately, uh, but. Fortunately for us, because we have a written First Amendment, we can point to the fact that we've been consistent about that. Uh, I just think it's unfortunate that we have to articulate right. Exactly. The issues that are already implied in the body of the four pages of the Constitution. Right, and, and it should not be about uh, what the, uh, that only what that which the Constitution forbids uh, you can't do. Right. Uh, all right, we'll be back.
This is America Matters Media on AM 1180 KCKQ, a Lotus Broadcast Station, the power of radio since 1967. Want to expand your advertising dollar? Sponsor this or any America Matters program by calling 775-827-8900, extension 2. Hello and welcome back to Talking Truth to Power. My name is Brendan Trainer. I'm your host today, our special guest Leland Fagri. And uh, for those Jennifer Green fans, she's not going to be here today. Hey, Jennifer Churchill, please. Yeah, Jennifer Churchill <laughs> Green. All right. <laughs> And uh, we're, oh, we're on the air every Friday from 9 to 10 a.m. on 1180 a.m. on America Matters Radio. And we stream all over the world to all 4 billion internet users on www.americamatters.us. And you can call us at 844-790-TALK. I first met Jennifer when she was Jennifer Kuhn. Yes, so, did I. so that's how I know her. Yes, I know her. Her father, of course, was uh, very big in the rock hall uh, movement and uh, uh, was the one that, uh, in, when uh, uh, Romney was running uh, for, for president, he, uh, he would get up as the Nevada delegate and announce votes for Ron Paul, and then the camera would move to the yep. main stage, yep. and the person would ignore him and just say, if Nevada votes for Governor Romney. Right, but well, we knew who he was. Yes. <laughs> That's a soldier, right? Yeah. Yes. And um, I would like to uh, shift a little bit and go overseas. Uh, there have been quite, uh, several events that have happened. Uh, one was the World War I commemoration and the spat that the uh, president uh, got into with uh, French Premier Macron over the definition of nationalism and patriotism. And uh, Macron uh, believes, uh, well, Macron is uh, an interesting person. and. He, uh, he is basically running on more of the same, only with more youthful vigor. That's it. A repackaged version of the old order. Yes. But he's a globalist. He's, uh, he reveals himself. And it's interesting, but his approval ratings have, in France have plummeted faster than even some of the worst socials. Yeah, 29%. Yeah. Yes. And uh, lately, even um, uh, Jean Penn, uh, Marine. Marine. Marine Penn, yes. She is totally higher than him, slightly higher than him for the first time. They, re they renamed the part. Oh. Uh, I can't, it doesn't come off the top of my head at the moment, but it's a nice name. And it, it could, okay. They repackage themselves, remarket themselves for the future. Yes. So uh, we find that extremely interesting. And um, the, uh, of course, there's a, a his version of. Uh, Globalism is what is under fire, especially in Eastern Europe with Hungary, Czechoslovakia, and Poland, uh, for somewhat different reasons, but basically because they, they're trying to avoid being swamped by uh, uh, Angela Merkel's um, uh, allowance of uh, un mass migration of those that, frankly, they helped to create in the Syria situation but, and the Libya situation but also just also even the pressure from uh, Africans to come to Europe uh, because the conditions are so bad there. And when I was there in 98, it was, I was quite a shock by, um, not a family, just interesting that there, there were so many Africans in, in Paris. Right. Even then, in 98. Of course, the proximity just across the Mediterranean there, but it, it was really interesting to see that. I, I didn't have that impression of France at the time. And here we are. 20 years later. Yes. And it's also interesting that Macron, uh, who is married to a woman 20 years is, is older than he is, seems to enjoy the presence of gay black men. <laughs> there, I've seen him photographed uh, really pressing the flesh uh, with uh, half-naked uh, uh, black gay people and, and with a big smile on his face. And it's, you know, that's, that's something that may have contributed to his uh, lack of popularity in France. Not that I have anything against gay black people, but apparently he's opened up some traditional French uh, buildings to, uh, for uh, gay celebrations and so on. And that is something that um, the traditionalists anyway in Europe, the, those that are left, are, are not uh, very happy with. Plus, doesn't it just, by, by its very nature, reduce the stature 
uh, of the debate when you, when you begin to go down that road towards social issues. Uh -huh. so you really need to get to the, the, the brass tacks of economic and foreign policy. Yes, okay. And, and, and I think that when politicians do themselves a disservice when they start to patronize those elements of the, the character of politics. And it's all identity politics again, which is what we're, we're seeing so much of here. For example, Nancy Pelosi, well, she's a woman, but uh, so she believes that she is entitled to be Speaker of the House because she is a woman, and, and she uh, even more so than her accomplishments, which are real. She, she does have real talent and accomplishments as far as raising money and, and keeping her troops in line. So, But uh, identity politics pervades the left, not so much the right, although uh, it's its own problem with identity, uh, namely the uh, Christian and uh, the uh, absolute subservience to Israeli uh, identity, and that's another thing that was in the news. Uh, although it did not get very extensive coverage, once again in the mainstream media, but um, Israelis uh, initiated, an, there's been ongoing trouble for six months in Gaza. They've been shooting demonstrators uh, who have been throwing rocks, and uh, even unarmed uh, health workers, social, uh, trying to help the wounded. And um, so Hamas is, was boiling over, and Israel, Israel sent in a, a private car with uh, special ops people, some of them dressed as women, reportedly, and they assassinated uh, one or two Hamas commanders. And then when they left, when they fled, they received heavy air support, which killed over uh, half a dozen uh, Palestinians. And the Palestinians responded with 400 uh, rockets, rockets that were fired, but even more so from the reports I'm seeing that they destroyed an Israeli bus. Now apparently it was symbolic because there was nobody in the bus except a hapless Arab driver who got wounded. But it's the, re the way they destroyed it that they used a, an anti-tank missile, the same one that Hezbollah used against Israeli tanks in 2006. So uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, now there's a dispute over who sued for peace. But most reports say that it was Bibi that actually went to the Egyptians and tried to get a ceasefire. And that so angered uh, the farther right, I mean, if you think Bibi is far right, there's actually farther right elements in Israel, that the uh, a foreign minister, Avigor Lieberman, abruptly resigned and said that uh, Bibi is too soft on terrorism. Because remember, there is a movement in the, in the Trump administration to assemble uh, a group of Arab nations in, with Israel mm -hmm. to take care of their own needs, their own futures, their own military requirements, etc. So uh, that would offend that element. Oh, yeah, of, I, I know that. Yeah, and Arab nation. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, it could. <laughs> I mean, we could always, always hope that it has that. Yeah. Um, but uh, this, the thing is that uh, uh, Americans just don't realize that the uh, Orthodox Ju uh, Judaics in Israel are not like Jerry Seinfeld and Judd Hirsch. I mean, this, this guy Lieberman is an ethnic Russian. He was a bouncer and who knows what else in one of the most corrupt uh, countries in the world, Moldova. And uh, now he's the uh, the defense, or was the defense minister in Israel, and the new uh, some the one that is uh, pushing uh, Netanyahu to for promotion belongs to an even smaller and even further right party, uh, the Israel Homeland Party, I believe it's called. And uh, Bibi is under a lot of pressure. First of all, he has the indictments against him for corruption. The last Israeli president, Olmert, was uh, actually uh, tried and convicted of corruption. Yeah. So that's one thing the Israelis do pretty well. Well, they do it all the time. Yeah. And they <laughs> formulate. <laughs> and um, and but now his, his governing majority now is only two seats, because Lieberman pulled his party out of the coalition. So there's very likely to be new uh, elections in Israel. And it, it'll be interesting to see what comes out, but I don't... I don't have much hope because even the left in Israel is uh, pretty far to the right. I mean, they they 
they will they're not talking about going back to the night even the left is, uh, the politicians that is no. in Peretz newspaper the left uh, wing organ in Israel does talk about things like that but the politicians themselves are not uh, are about returning to the 1967 boundaries or giving the Palestinians any kind of right of return or any of the other contentious issues but uh, we're also seeing the split here between Saudi Arabia and Qatar because Qatar apparently is financing Hamas while Saudi Arabia is fighting the much more um, conciliatory and possibly turncoat uh, Abbas and the Palestinian uh, Liberation Organization. Yeah, that's it. Called that. yeah, it's the Vietnam of the region. Yeah, and um, this is putting uh, Trump's entire Israeli project in jeopardy. Now, we haven't actually seen his uh, plan, you know, he keeps talking about how he wants to cut a major deal. He, and he hasn't break. talked about it too much. He, Not lately. Just no, here no. and there. Uh, and I wish he would sort of um, formally mm -hmm. establish uh, what this uh, plan design is for the region. I think we get you know, Americans who are concerned about the meddling policies of the United States government for a chance to uh, reconsider you know, what, where this is going. Yes. And the, uh, but uh, the preliminary analysis is not optimistic that it was basically going to shut the Palestinians out and uh, it was very Israeli friendly uh, plan. But we haven't seen it formally. But this whole uh, problem with uh, Khashoggi and uh, Mohammed bin Salman uh, has, and now Big uh, Bibi has put the uh, Kushner's. Uh, yeah, both of them. That's the one. He's the one. I'm more concerned about him than I am with anybody else. And maybe we'll get back to talk about the money on both of them. Let's do that. Despite the recent changes in health care, there are many of you, for whatever reason, are still without health care. Join me Saturdays, 10 to noon, here on American Matters. Unable to listen to the whole show? A recording of today's program will be available later today. Visit americanmatters.us and click on the podcast link. Hello and welcome back to Talking Truth to Power. Once again, I'm Brendan Trainer, your, uh, your host today, and uh, along with our special guest, Leland Fagri. And uh, we were talking about the Middle East, but uh, now let's go back a little bit to uh, Washington, D.C., and how Melania Trump may have just trumped John Bolton. This is a great story. Yes. And, and what I just uh, went to the USA Today story online, it says or it indicates that she may not have ever even met Mira Ricardo. Uh-huh. But uh, apparently the waves that this woman creates uh, offended her and she's out. And as it turns out, uh, I, right away I smell that since she was associated with John Bolton, that she must be a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. So I went to the membership list, and sure enough, she's right there. Yes, uh, our, our famous CFR. Uh, they never met a, a war or a big state solution they didn't like. And uh, the uh, Council on Foreign Relations is a uh, deep state, uh, you know, Rockefeller, I, his name has been associated with it, as long as many other uh, Banksters and, and it's now a, yeah, it's now a hundred years old. Yes, so and it, it came from what is now referred to as Chatham House in, in England, who has their hands all over the Brexit, the phony Brexit deal. Uh, but it was the, uh, the original name, the parent was the Royal Institute of International Affairs. Right, that's where it originally it was Cecil Rhodes and all that. Part. Yes, Cecil Rhodes and the uh, uh, how the, the torch of imperialism has been passed from England to America. Exactly. Yeah. And around the world, I think every nation now has its own version of the Institute of International Affairs, the Swedish Institute of International oh, Affairs, okay. the Norwegian Institute of International <laughs> Affairs, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. They're all committed to all, Oh, yes, I was just going to say. And so we know uh, where their loyalties lie. And do you think there's something to this? Again, we would oh, certainly hope so. And some people, other people are hope, hoping as well that this is uh, the beginning of a, maybe a slow coup d'etat over Bolton? Well, I, I think it, he was always reluctant to even entertain the idea of Bolton as a national security advisor, but uh, he wants to keep his foot in the door over there, I think, uh, on 58th Street, which is where they're located. And what I see from this USA Today story is that she is being considered uh, to, uh, as an envoy to 
uh, Estonia. Yeah. So she, she, she'll be in the apparatus of foreign policy, even though she's not in the White House. That's what it looks here, what I'm seeing here. Estonia, Estonia huh? Yeah. That is where um, Christopher Steele headed the MI6 uh, operation in Russia that recruited uh, Sergei Sturkel as a counter agent. And uh, they've also been accused of uh, a lot of other things. Uh, Putin hasn't come, uh, Vladimir Putin hasn't come right out and said it, but uh, he said that he knows what, what went on. And there's, uh, uh, there were two Operation Gladios. One was right after World War I, which was uh, in bringing in communists to fight uh, the rem remnants of the fascists, something of that nature. But this operation was also called Gladio, and it was bringing in um, uh, Georgian uh, mercenaries and to uh, 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 cause uh, some of the interaction and terrorism, often aimed at children, that occurred during the uh, the terrible war against wars against uh, the Chechen jihadis. And uh, another thing uh, people don't know is that um, Saudi Arabia went to Putin after he started to intervene in Syria in 1915. And Saudi, the Saudis told him that, you know, we, we really pulled the strings in Chechnya. And uh, if you want us to stop, uh, just uh, uh, turn your back on, on uh, Assad and on Tehran and Iran and we'll stop the jihadis in Chechnya. Now, of course, that's yeah. not something we can prove, but there's a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of stories uh, concerning that. So, well, in hindsight, we will probably... Yeah, we'll probably be able to find out it when uh, 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 maybe WikiLeaks will uncover the documents that maybe they have, and I just don't know. It, but yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's one thing that Russia does better than we do, and let's face it, uh, Russia stands by its friends much more so than America does. We have abandoned so many of our friends. We just recently in Syria we abandoned the um, so-called moderate rebels in uh, the southern part of the southeastern uh, Syria, uh, southwestern Syria. I mean near the Golan Heights, and it's very. Uh, we're, it's, we're going to have to wait and see what we do about the Kurds in uh, the other in the uh, northeastern part of Syria. Well, whether we, we abandon them? Yeah, we pay for them so that we can pull the rug out from under them quite easily. Yes. And we do, we've been doing that since the CIA came into existence. So. Right. The Marsh people and, uh, and Iraq is another uh, glaring example that some people might remember. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but um, if Melania is, uh, if she really is a, a force for um, nationalism and against globalism, that would be a welcome development. I mean, she's a, we all know she's a very classy lady. She's harassed by the left because uh, she uh, has a, a Slavic accent, which is terrible. And, but speaks she, five languages. Yes, yeah, speaks five languages, you know, and uh, very intelligent, beautiful woman, and uh, I'm glad that she won this fight, and hopefully we'll see a little bit more coming out of out of her office. And she's not nearly as uh, expensive. Uh, Michelle Obama's uh, staff was uh, two or three times the size of her staff. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, well, so whether the decision was conscious or otherwise, it was a good decision. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> off of her head. Oh, excuse me, off to Estonia. <laughs> and, uh, well, it's, again, it's not surprising because the Baltic states have stolen the most uh, Russian Baltic.